Hello and welcome to another Fresh Off the Stalls for yet another night at the Face to Face Festival of Solo Theatre. Uh, so this is the first one this evening uh, and again very quickly during the interval. Uh, so this one is for a collection of pieces um, uh, presented tonight under the heading Voices from the Edge. Um, now this is really interesting um, and if I'm going to sum it up as a sort of if there's uh, you know the general theme that's over, apart from Voices of the Edge, which is the title, but a sort of more theme. It's exploring solo theatre at its most intense and most empowerful. So it's another really sort of, um, it's been a very heavy evening for me. This thing is 8.5%. That's sort of had to resort to. Uh, that's not to say it's been terrible. I mean, resort to because it's been intense, not because it's been awful. It has not been awful. It has been fantastic. Um, I love this exploration. Uh, it's challenging. It's provocative. Um, and it's really eye-opening, and it, it, it's it's for, for me from, from from my point of view as someone who's covering the festival uh, as a critic, um, not necessarily a very good one, but a critic nonetheless. It really pushes the boundaries, and really it is because if if you go back to my interview I had with Colin, it's all about um, making people realise that solo theatre is not just someone standing there; uh, it's an involvement, uh, it, it's an interaction. Uh, it's a reaction as well. I think that if tonight's really that sort of reaction thing. So we're looking at some voice, uh, the people, the voices from the edge uh, quite often refer, almost, uh, you know, mostly to do with war-torn places, mostly to do with displacement, mostly to do with, you know, the people that are actually in conflict. Kind of harking very, uh, very neatly back to the Martha Gellhorn piece uh, that was on the other night. So we got, um, Six different, six different writers and performers. Some performers are performing other people's work. Some people are performing their own written works. Um, and it's rather brilliant. Uh, it leaves you with a lot of food for thought. And again, it's just that wonderful thing that uh, I always, I've, I've said it quite a few times now, that these actors are so good that they're on stage, the stage shrinks. Uh, and you hang on their every word. And just the subject matter of the things that have gone on for this particular six pieces, um, just make it even more involving, even more painful. I'm going to talk about three which have really stuck in my mind, just uh, and only the, only three rather than all of them, just for the sake of brevity. It's a very short interval. This is actually the second interval of the evening, um, which is not good for me, especially. <laughs> but anyway, that aside. Um, first off, Jemsky's piece, uh, and I forgot the name of it, and I haven't brought the program with me, which is uh, a huge oversight. Uh, 15 seconds it was called. Um, what I really loved about it is that it starts off and you just think it's just... Uh, I overheard two ladies speaking in front of me afterwards. So I just thought it was going to be some middle-aged woman moaning about how awful her life is. Uh, and it, it does start off like that. And so I, I actually thought, like, where's this going? I'm kind of like, it's, it's, it seems a bit self-indulgent. Uh, and then all of a sudden um, you realise that even though she's not putting on a persona as such, she's not doing an accent, she's, she's not, uh, she doesn't seem anything uh, otherwise than a sort of uh, white female self in appearance and, and in voice, and you realise that she's actually, I won't give it away, just in case it does go on, you realise that not all is what it seems, uh, and you actually feel a bit bad for having those perceptions at first, uh, and it becomes a really striking uh, and uh, really gripping piece. So, uh, Jemsky, fantastic work for how you really played with perception. It was brilliant. Um, Claire Dowie's, which has finished it off. Uh, <laughs> I loved it. It was, it stuck out a bit as uh, it was the less, it was not only less serious than the other pieces, it was, uh, came across as a bit more frivolous, but um, I did, lots of people laughed. There was comic moments in it, but I actually found it quite disturbing. It's just this, this person with this, really, really intense obsession verging on more than a little bit sinister. Um, but what I loved about it uh, is that it's possibly one of the most unnerving and elongated, <laughs> most untasteful jokes I've, I, I've, I've heard. Uh, it's got a wonderful, I wouldn't say so much twist with the punchline at the end, uh, but I just love the journey Claire takes you on, but it just starts becoming more and more and more uncomfortable and more like, like what is going on here? What is, what is the underlying thing? You start to get really creeped out, even though you, you're kind of laughing because it's kind of funny, but it's just like, uh, not sure what's going on here. Uh, so marvellous. Uh, and the third, third piece I'm going to bring up, and again, it comes with a bit of a caveat that this is a piece that again has struck very close to the bone because it's a very uh, close issue, uh, very issue close to my heart. Um, 
So it's written by Kate Adshed. I can't remember the name of the format, and uh, it's terrible. Uh, I, I really let myself down here. Uh, but it was called Free Lotus Flowers. Uh, a very, very, very brief history uh, about my family. Uh, my mother's from Hong Kong. Her grandpa well, my grandparents, so her parents, uh, before she was born, uh, fled from Maoist China um, during the Cultural Revolution. Um, so any piece about China, uh, and especially a piece about the horrible things uh, the, the communist government did and still do there today is something that is is just um, I, I have to apologise to the audience sitting around me because I was kind of like failing really to, to fight back the tears and sort of the, the, um, the sort of really violent <laughs> shudderings of breath as I try to like uh, stifle just weeping uncontrollably um, but I think Adshed's writing is beautiful and it is, and I know it's a devastating a lot this week, um, but it really is, it just, it made me crumble. Um, and I think yes, more so because of the subject matter and just the coincidence that they are, how, how, how close the subject is to me. Um, but a, 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 sh a heart shattering performance as well and I feel terrible for not having got a, got the performance name I shall definitely uh, it'll, it'll be, I'll put it in bold in my, in my interview if, it, if, if that's enough of a mayor culpa um, but yeah so those are three the other three pieces are also great I can't there was not one that, that, that felt weak or, or, or lesser by comparison they're all incredibly intense I'm going to have to start thinking of other, uh, other adjectives, or at least hope that this festival can deliver uh, deliver shows that make, means I can use another adjective. Uh, and uh, but yeah, really is an excellent exploration of just the just the gravitas that solo theatre can really put the force um, that is just unique. Uh, almost well, no, it is not unique. Almost it is unique to. Um, to its genre, the fact that um, it's because you got that because the whole point of solo theatre is about making that personal connection. So when you're listening to such um, personal stories about people, it becomes astonishing and almost too much to bear. But at the same time, because it's theatre and because theatre should enrich the, uh, enrich the soul and should broaden the mind, it's exactly what it needs to be doing and it's thrilling because it does that even if my eyes are quite sore um <laughs> after three lotus flowers um but excellent uh, i know i know truly excellent i'm really i'm hoping that uh, that something as bad is going to come up this week because i just feel like i'm praising everything but everything this week so far um is deserve uh, is deserving of praise so voices on the edge fantastic and i shall be back soon with another fresh up assault hopefully with drier eyes and or more moisturized eyes, I'm going to go and finish my incredibly strong beer. Bye.